Hey, chat here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with our Gobo textures in Arnold. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you'll get access to this pack of Gobos, plus our entire material library, all of our plugins, and all of our training. So let's talk about Gobos. Gobo stands for Goes Before Optics. It's a common phrase used in stage and film lighting. It literally means to put something in front of a light to throw some interesting shadows into your scene. Gobos can emulate anything from Venetian blinds to tree branches or maybe some abstract shapes. And we've got a set of 60 in Grayscale Gorilla Plus that I think you're gonna like, so let's jump in. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. I've got Arnold fired up and we are going to get some nice looking gobos going in our scene. So this scene, let me just get out of this camera so you can see what's going on. It's a super simple scene, a couple of walls, some stone blocks, some vases, and a fake floor. But from the right perspective, it can look pretty cool. And you can see I've got these guides here. If you haven't checked out our plugin, Social Frame, it's a great little plugin to pre-visualize Social Frame crops. So I've got like HD, I've got a vertical crop, and then of course I have a center crop for Instagram. And if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend it. Okay, so let's jump into what we've got going on up here. So this light here says Gobo Sun, but it's actually a spotlight, but I'm emulating a sun. That's why I named it Gobo Sun. I've got HDRI Link, which is a cool way we can actually drive our Gobos in the Plus library down here. Grayscale Girl Plus members get access to tons of materials, tons of textures, HDRIs, and all these brand new Gobos. Okay. So HDR Link is going to be driving this Gobo selection. We're going to set this up from scratch, but I just wanted to show this to you. All right, so let's turn this light off. Let's actually turn off our fill light, our sky dome, and we'll turn on this brand new spotlight that I just created, and it's very much just default. I think I brought up the exposure slightly, and I turned off the specular contribution because specular contributions on a spotlight can look a little bit weird. Okay, how do we set this up? Well, we first need to come over to our little material uh, lister here and say, create Arnold light filter gobo. Arnold has this really neat, and if you haven't checked it out before, I highly recommend it. We're going to talk a little bit about it today. This gobo uh, texture here gives us quite a bit of control. Let's just jump in there. We have control over the offset, the rotation, the scale, the wrapping of the gobo, all sorts of stuff. So what we want to do now is jump over to the plus library and select one of our gobos. And we're just going to drag that over into our Arnold shading network. And we're going to connect this up to the slide map. Now, once that's done, we don't see anything update yet. That's because we haven't told Arnold to see this gobo texture in the spotlight. Because we have to do that if we select the light. When we go over to details, we can see this little spot space down here called light filters. Arnold has this really cool ability to add light filters. In fact, they have kind of uh, a few of them. Barn doors, gobos, light blockers, light decay. I'm not going to get into those talking about gobos today. So let's jump over to our material lister and drag gobo into our light filter. And that's going to immediately put the gobo onto the light. So jumping back over to our shader uh, graph here, we can grab the gobo node. And now you can see we have the ability to offset this and kind of position this gobo where we want it. And maybe we want to slide it over here a little bit, get a nice little lights cutting in on our scene. It's not very bright right now, so we probably want to brighten this up if we're going to try to emulate like the sun or something. So I might bring this up to like a five, maybe somewhere in there. We kind of want these highlights to blow out on these rock on this rock a little bit. So maybe like six. Now, if we turn on our fill light, we're going to get that gobo look. And we haven't set anything up with HDR Link yet. We're going to do that in a second. But I wanted to walk through a couple of different things here. Um, when you're working with gobos, you want to make sure that your light looks like it's motivated by something. You don't want a gobo just kind of in the middle of a scene. So if I kind of zoom out here, if you were to see this, you would be like, well, that's weird. Is there like a light or a window like somewhere that I can't see right now? It feels unnatural. So try to make sure when you're using the gobo that they look motivated. They're coming from an actual source. In our case, we're faking the look of a light coming through a window with blinds. Okay, so let's adjust the spotlight uh, blurriness of our, of our, you can see our shadow here of our base looks way too sharp right now. So I'm going to increase the radius of our spotlight to maybe like three and just soften that up a little bit. It's probably too soft now, maybe like a two would be fine. We don't want it to look softer than the, uh, than the blinds because that will look unnatural. So maybe we'll do like 0.5, something like that feels pretty good. Okay. 
now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and hook up HDRI link to this. So grabbing our tag, we'll go HDRI link plus, and we're going to jump into our Gobo texture and just drag that image name right onto our HDRI link tag. Now, if I jump over to the plus library and we hop over here, we can start to change these out. We can maybe try one of these abstracts, or maybe we want to try uh, some, some like palm leaves, or maybe we want to try some like slats. Like this, this is kind of a cool look. The, the best part about dealing with these um, as a node is that you're going to get a little bit more control out of it. So let's actually go back to, um, let's go to maybe this one, lines 03. And maybe, maybe we want to clamp that down a little bit so that it's not so soft. So we can jump into our Arnold Shading Network for that gobo. And we can drop in a color corrector. Let's just drop that in. And we're going to put that right in between these two. There and there. And we're going to bring the gamma down a little bit to maybe like a 0.5. And now we're clamping that gobo down to get an interesting look. Then we can grab that gobo and start to offset its, start to offset it a little bit, to kind of make it feel a little bit more interesting. Maybe we want some of that light to just kind of touch the side of this vase a little bit. That's kind of a cool look. Uh, another interesting thing that you can do with the Gobo uh, node here in Arnold is you can change the way it wraps. So if we jump out of this camera, something like this, if we change our, our map type to maybe we want to try something like one of these windows, you're going to see that we have our single window coming in right there. We jump into this Gobo. We can change this to maybe only return black. Now what that means is if I change the scale of this to maybe like 0.5 and 0.5, we now are, we scaled it up actually, I want to go 2 and 2. Okay, so we've scaled that down. Let's actually get rid of our light here so we can see this a little bit better. And we're returning uh, the tile beyond the edges of our texture is going to return black. It's wrapping black. If we change this to periodic, it's going to repeat or tile that texture across the light. If we want to, let's say, change our map type to a treetop, so we have these nice little treetops here. It's like dappling of, of like sunlight coming in. You can see we don't necessarily want to repeat this treetop look, right? We don't want that to clone or uh, repeat and tile. We want that to just return white. So if you change the wrap type on that to uh, clamp, it's going to take the edge pixels of that texture and stretch them out. So now we get white, which is kind of a cool look. So let's jump back into our camera here and let's try to get a nice dappled sun look. We're just going to move our uh, texture over and just try to find a spot where it looks natural. Definitely want to bring the scale back up to where we had it before. And maybe we want to just Bring that tree top down somewhere like in here and we can turn our fill light back on because that's really what's going to make this thing feel correct. And there you go. And you can mess with the gamma if you want to like maybe get a little bit more uh, dapple look, kind of bring that gamma up a little bit. And now we've got a nice sunny, sunny gobo. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've got a ton of, uh, Gobo textures now here in the Plus Library. If you're a Plus member, you get access to all this stuff, plus HDarlink, plus Drop Zone, all that stuff. Um, all of our plugins, materials, blah, blah, blah. So it's so much stuff. It's, it's, it's really kind of insane. Um, that's about it. I think I've covered everything. Let me just double check the Gobo settings here and make sure I didn't actually forget to cover anything. Um, if you haven't checked out uh, the documentation for Arnold's Gobo uh, light filter, I highly recommend it. They have all these settings here I'm not going to get into right now uh, that can help you adjust and get the look that you're after with the Gobos. But uh, that'll do it for this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.